आथा योगा अनुशासनम नमस्ते वेलकम टू अनरावल द थ्रेड a podcast for people who want to apply the yoga sutras to yoga practice and to life today available online at simple-yoga.org where you can also find courses articles videos and guided meditations to enrich your practice i am ruben vasquez your companion on this journey of exploration On today's episode, we continue our journey through the second chapter of the Yoga Sutra with the second sutra about asana, Sutra 247. Sutra 47 in chapter 2 says, Releasing struggle and endlessly integrated. The previous aphorism is often quoted as the guideline for asana. Yet for some reason this sutra is not cited so frequently although it is an equally important guideline addressing how asana is practiced Once again there are two ideas combined the first one is letting go of all struggles and the second is to remove all distractions This brief instruction can be interpreted as a call for high efficiency struggle and distractedness will squander physical and mental energy becoming an obstacle to the meditated nature of your posture and actions endlessly integrated describes all resources articulating harmoniously in practicing asana posture and vinyasa transition between postures all systems and all aspects of yourself are coming together supporting and enhancing one another endlessly integrated also means to weave together your physical mental emotional and respiratory aspects seamlessly and effortlessly releasing all struggle is a suggestion helping to prevent the common action of increasing force when something is not working just like a person who is not understood by a speaker of a different language will tend to increase the volume of speech to bring the message across or the person trying to fit a piece into another may try to push a little bit harder to accomplish the task releasing struggle is common sense to remind you that struggle is not only ineffectual it is also a waste of your precious energy the converse side of this idea is that you can tell a seasoned craftsperson by the elegance and economy of their actions From the purely physical perspective, a sign of physical fitness is a body that maintains a low heartbeat and easeful breathing even when engaged in a challenging physical activity. From the vantage point of endlessly integrated, consider what happens when you observe a consummate performance in any field. It seems like time stands still. An attitude that contributes to timelessness is the attitude of having infinite time. Then there is no rush, no hurry, and no struggle so that everything can articulate effortlessly. One way to embody this guideline is by letting go of your agenda and by choosing instead to explore with playful curiosity so that you may experience directly what it feels like to do what you are doing. This seems like a healthy approach conducive to experiencing asana according to the comment on the previous sutra becoming a steady meditative abode of emptiness This aphorism echoes the sentiment expressed in sutras 13 and 14 abiding in one's true nature and free from misidentification with one's temporary ways of being Releasing it of struggle is stepping into being with what is as it is and being with yourself just as you are. Many of the struggles and distractions result from trying to be something that you are not. Like when you try to be as you think you should be or as you think others expect you to be. As you practice asana, what are the struggles that emerge? 
What are the sources of those struggles? Are your struggles a symptom of your assumptions and expectations? Can you notice mental, physical or emotional agitation? Is your breath continuous, smooth and fluid? Are you in a rush? Is there a hidden agenda? Is your practice a way to meet yourself? to make yourself into somebody different, or to avoid meeting yourself. What is your relationship to time in your practice? Can your asana and vinyasa practice be a timeless abiding in contemplative presence? What happens if you take several rounds of breath, ensuring that your inhalations and exhalations are smooth, continuous, and long. Try a few rounds of a sequence of postures that is quite familiar for you. Observe your breath as closely as possible. What do you notice? Is your breath easeful? If it isn't, when do these qualities change? What happens? Do you hold your breath? Does your breath get jerky or jagged? Does your breath get short and labored? How are the transitions between your inhalations and your exhalations? Can you balance the length and quality of your inhalation and your exhalation? You may also want to observe if your practice feels different when you match your breath to your movements. What is your attitude when you practice? Can you be fully focused on what you are doing? Is your practice a tool to integrate your body, mind, emotions and breathing? As usual, one more way of exploring the meaning of this sutra is by chanting it. You can choose to chant it in its traditional form with all of the words coming together. Parayatna shaitilyananta samapati pyam Another option is to chant each word in the sutra individually. Prayatna Shaitilya Ananta Samapati Pyam 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 Thank you very much for listening. I hope you can join me for the next episode when we will continue by exploring the last sutra related to asana, Sutra 248. Please remember that you can find more information, yoga courses, and many free resources, including articles, videos, and guided meditations at simple-yoga.org. I would appreciate it if you could share this podcast with others. Thank you. Until next time, namaste.